I'm going to make some crab apple jelly. I visited a friend in St. Stephen yesterday who has a beautiful crab apple tree in her front yard and she very kindly gave me a large box of, of crab apples. Crab apple jelly is probably the easiest jelly to make. You know, the only ingredients is crab apple juice and sugar. Uh, they're quite tart. Actually, these are really sour, which means they've got a lot of pectin in them. So you don't have to add any artificial pectin. And I will take you through the recipe, and the recipe is uh, one that I've, as usual, I've found online. This one is from cooks.com. Um, very simple recipe, but it tells you how much sugar to add for the different amounts of juice that you might end up with. So. First process, I didn't really need to wash them. There's no need, there weren't any pesticides or anything in use here, but they, they did get the dust off of them. So. Now I will uh, remove the stems and slice each one in two and bring you back when I have all of that in a large stock pot. Well, they're all cut in half, and aren't they an amazing thing? They're pink or red right through, so I suspect it's going to be a very colorful jelly. Next part of the process is to put them in a, in my case, a very large stock pot, and it's full. Uh, you, they don't have to be covered in water, but you should be able to see the water, and that's what I've done. And now you bring it to a boil, and then reduce it to a, either a very slow boil or a simmer, and cook it for two hours. Uh, this should all cook down considerably, and it'll come back at the end of that part of the process. By the way, I, I added two and a half liters of water here, but that's irrelevant. It depends on how many apples. You can do this with any amount of apples. And the amount that I had it, and in this stock pot, it took two and a half liters to bring the water up to where it should be. But you would just uh, readjust that depending on how many apples you're using. And the formula that comes along with the recipe tells you how much sugar to add depending on how much juice you get. So it's a really simple recipe. Well, instead of decreasing in size like I thought they would do when they were cooking, they were expanding. <laughs> I guess the individual apples, whatever, coming out of their skins. So I had to divide it. I now have it in, in two stock pots. Well, this is a, a pressure cooker, one that I prefer to use to make jam anyway because it has a nice heavy bottom. But we're only about a half hour, I guess, into the cooking process here. For safety reasons, I put uh, this jelly bag strainer thing over a large bowl, but I also put it in the sink in case something might happen. It won't go all over the room. Very sticky stuff and also very hot. So I put it in at a ladle at a time. I'm sure someone's going to ask where I got this. I've been thinking about that. I'm not really 100% sure, but I think perhaps Lee Valley. Lee Valley is a company that has a lot of good kitchen gadgets. Both They're both in Canada and the United States. So if you check LeeValley.com for a jelly strainer, I guess that's what I would call it anyway. I think I will probably have to do this several times. As you know, I have two pots full and uh, once the liquid get up, gets up to the level of the bottom of the jelly bag here, there isn't much sense in continuing. So You just let it drain until it stops dripping anything out and then empty that out and start over again. One thing you, I should mention you don't want to do, it is very tempting to press down to get all of the liquid out. You can do that and it'll still make jelly, but it won't make a clear jelly. It'll be cloudy because of all of the bits and pieces of small pieces of apple and whatever that are going through. So The best thing to do is to just let it drip naturally. And I'll bring you back when I've finished all of this later on and show you how much I managed to collect. Well, I got 10 cups of juice, and the uh, instructions say that means that you add 11 cups of sugar. I've done that, and it hasn't completely dissolved yet. I've just turned the heat on. Um, I tasted it. It's still a bit tart, but of course, like I said, all of the sugar hasn't dissolved yet. Now you bring it to a boil and you 
instructions say to boil it for 35 minutes. Well, in this pot I won't be able to bring it to a full rolling boil. It doesn't say that anyway, but I won't be able to do that and boil it for 35 minutes because it would quickly boil over. So mine might take a little longer than 35 minutes. The instructions don't seem to uh, give any indication of ways to test it, but if I remember rightly, if you put a small plate in the freezer and get it cold, and if you put a few drops on the plate, you can tell whether or not it is ready to gel by running your finger down through it and it stays stays separated, that sort of thing. Also, the instructions say uh, to leave it dripping overnight in the jelly bag contraption or, or uh, cheesecloth, whichever you're using. I don't do that. I've done it in the past, but once it gets down to the point where you're only getting two or three drips a minute, it's not that far from stopping completely anyway, and there really isn't any point in, in waiting overnight. So Once I had what I thought I was getting out of it and the drips had really slowed down, I just changed it out and did the other half in the same jelly bag. But Got more than I need. 10 cups plus the 11 cups of sugar. I don't know. I've uh, got 11, no, I've got 10 pint 500 milliliter canning jars in the oven where I have, I wash them first and put them in the oven at 350 to sterilize them. And the oven is shut off now. I think probably 10 jars is, is more than enough, but if I'm wrong, whatever is left over will go into a bowl or a plastic container or something and get used first. I'll bring you back later on once I've had this boiling for a half hour or so and do the first test to see if it's uh, ready to put in the jars. Well, boiling away nicely. It's been boiling now for about seven, seven minutes, I guess. So I've got about 28 minutes left to go and producing some foam which you don't have to bother skimming off until the end because it will produce more and I'll bring you back at that time. The time is almost up another couple of minutes left in the boiling and I have been skimming off some of the foam. I don't think I will bother with that cold plate test if you can see what's happening here or not. This is a spoon that I wouldn't spoon that I've been stirring it with some and it gels very fast on the spoon as it cools down so I think it is ready hope it is anyway I'll put it in bottles and overnight we'll see whether or not it sets up it reduced quite a bit in that 35 minutes I don't know how much but it's well it's, it's lowered down a good inch or more I think that there is probably the, the line of where it was but it looks good. It's a pretty color. And here's hoping it turns into jelly. I don't think I'm going to need my ten jars. I should have had another jar out to put this funnel thing in, I guess. I'm going to make a mess here, but nothing new. I've made messes before. Within a quarter inch or so of the top is the recommended for jellies anyway, and jams. These lids have been uh, boiled in, in water. It softens up the rubber ring as well as sterilizing them if I don't knock you on the floor here. I reuse the rings, but not the, uh, the lids. used to use the lids over again years ago, but I have stopped doing that. Well, I will bring you back and show you how many jars I managed to fill. I ended up with six 500 milliliter pint jars and that little uh, custard dish that you see in, in front of them there left over. So that will be the part that I sample probably for breakfast in the morning if everything gels up like I hope it does. 
I'll bring you back and show you that anyway and see what it looks like in the morning. Most uh, um, instructions for making jelly or jam say that once you put the lids on to leave them alone for 24 hours. Well, <laughs> again, that's something I've never done. But you should leave them alone until they are completely cooled. And that gives the jelly a chance to set. So overnight by morning it should be cooled down enough that uh, it has set if it's going to. So we'll see that in the morning. Well, I'm ready to give this a try. The six bottles gelled up very nicely. I'm having it with cinnamon raisin toast this morning. I did not make the bread. The roosters are sending forth outside there in good shape. And of course a, a latte out of my new espresso machine. Surprisingly, for having 11 cups of sugar to the 10 cups of, of juice, it still has a very tart taste to it. Those apples were extremely sour, which is why everything gelled so well. Well, thank you very much, Martha, for the apples. I'll make sure that you get a bottle of the jelly. I thank everybody for watching. I hope you've uh, Give this a try if you've got access to some crab apples.